Hey everybody, Kino Entertainer here. So I have this video that I wanted to record in response to this guy named Damien Keys, Keyes. I forget how he pronounces his name in his videos. But anyways, the title of the video says how to legally cover songs on YouTube without copyright claims. I had a response that I wanted to make to this and there's another YouTuber whose videos I'm going to reference um, on here as well later on. Uh, she's very knowledgeable. Um, now she even has the whole gray area concept that I'll explain later on because he brings it up in his video. But there was just a lot of stuff that I, as an entertainer, and I've been trying to figure out on YouTube how to upload cover songs without worrying about copyright. And so I've been searching and searching and searching and I've found like so many videos that really don't explain much. And this is probably one of the worst ones. Now, he does explain something that I didn't know previously that I found out thanks to him. But other than that, a lot of it is just like, it's really repetitious, it's weird. Like, I don't understand why he needs to regurgitate the same information over and over again. But anyways, so I'm watching this video on my computer, listening to it in here, and then I'm going to be posting this reaction. Let's begin. It's Damien Keyes here, welcome back to the channel. So releasing covers on YouTube used to be the big game. If you look at Boyce Avenue or Tyler Ward or Postmodern Jukebox, that was the best way of actually getting the organic growth when you are a musician or a band trying to get traction onto YouTube. The problem is... I'm pretty sure those bands though still played by the rules. Whether or not they did it in the beginning, I'm sure they eventually did. So like bringing them up is, in my opinion, a moot point. Okay, so I looked up um, Postmodern Jukebox and I couldn't find anything else about them and I didn't research the other guy, but yeah, see, from even from day one, Boy Savvy was playing by the rules. The industry has caught up, and while done well, a good cover on YouTube can really make or break. It can really build your brand and your organic growth. But done badly, it can result in copyright strikes or potentially even worse. So in today's video, I wanna go in. So I'm not sure what you mean by, I'm assuming when you say done well, and done bad, um, you pres you mean to say done legally and done illegally, because, <laughs> I mean, if you do a cover song, it doesn't matter how good or bad you perform it. I mean, it does in terms of, like, if you want it to go anywhere on your channel, but in terms of stated illegally. So, I see your, what you're trying to say here, but I feel like wrong choice of words to everything you need to know legally to be putting out covers on YouTube. For example, what about demonetization? Everything you need to know legally. We'll see about that. What's the difference between demonetization and having something blocked? What licenses do you need and how do you get those licenses? And obviously the big one, which is what exactly is fair use, especially in 2020, so strap yourself in. Well, fair use, regardless of whatever year it is, is, is fair use, it's the same explanation as to what's copyright, you know? I mean, I'm confused, man. It's confusing me. Cause this one's gonna be a big one. Nice. So back in the day, which was a Wednesday, Pretty interesting reference with um, Michael Rosen and uh, the, I don't know what those head whips were about. And be careful, you might give yourself whiplash. <laughs> Wednesday, well before streaming, it was a relatively straightforward process if you wanted to cover someone's song because you would need permission from the owner in order to record that song and put that on a physical piece of content like a CD or vinyl, which then would go out to shops and people would buy it. Ah. When you get a mechanical license, you can distribute music that way. <laughs> you said it's straightforward back then that you would have to go and ask for permission or that's what you have to do nowadays too. You still have to find out a way to get in touch with them. Those days. 
But then came along streaming, and then came along YouTube, and all of a sudden, fair use came into play, which is... Fair use did not come into play upon the inception of YouTube and these cover songs. Fair use has been around since 19th century, man. And it was codified, I think in 1976 via the Copyright Act. Um, so yeah, fair use wasn't just like, it just popped up after YouTube began. That's not really what happened, man. When are you allowed to use someone's cover and when aren't you allowed to use someone's cover? That would mean in all... You are allowed to use someone's cover if you get the mechanical license and you choose to not upload it to any media platform that would be video. And, or if you want to do that, you got to get the sync license too. And which artists can you not cover? Any of them you don't do that for, unless it's royalty free music. <laughs> or maybe if they're like, up and coming and they like do garage band or something and you ask them and you don't have to go through the whole licensing stuff. I mean, I don't know if you can do that. I'm imagining that might be the case, but I'm not speaking from experience here. This is completely conjecture on my behalf. In order to get permission, you would need a license. So do you need a license to upload a cover of someone else's song on YouTube? Well, technically the answer is yes. However, you just said that you need a license to upload it to YouTube. And then you repeated the same statement again and said, technically, yes, you need a license. It's not a technical, it is a definitive. Quite a lot of artists and labels are pretty cool with you recording covers and putting them on YouTube. But some artists and some labels are not so cool with it. Like very, very. Um, that might be true. I think in the instance of like my example, where it's someone who's up and coming, they might be okay with you just throwing it on there because it's promotion for them. But you giving that blanket statement that just well, some artists are just and some companies just a okay with it. It's like well, you do realize that, like for instance, say Amen by Panic at the Disco in parentheses Saturday Night. When I looked at the song and who's accredited in composing it, there's like almost 15 plus people for one song. So, I mean, unless you are just willing to roll the dice and hope that all 15 of those people aren't gonna have a problem with you uploading that cover song, I'd say to make that statement would have been extremely beneficial to say caveat, probably an up and coming person, not an established musician. Just saying, man. <laughs> very, very not cool with it. There are three possibilities that happen when you upload a cover to YouTube. Number one, nothing happens. Either they don't see it or they do see it and they say, hey, you knock yourself out. Have a great time covering our song. It's some extra publicity for us. Have some fun. Number two is it gets claimed, which we'll talk about a bit more, and in which case it becomes demonetized. And number three, it becomes blocked. It becomes removed off YouTube, and what was there is all of a sudden not as there as it once was. Demonetize is where the art... What was once there is all of a sudden no longer there as it once was. Redundant, much redundant. Trust me, I, I, it's, it gets pretty in intense. Like this guy likes spinning the same thread of yarn over and over and over again. I'm not sure if that was just to fill time in the video or if he thinks his audience is that inept that he needs to continuously reference the same line of logic in multiple different ways as if that changes what he's saying. Now in response to the possibilities, it's not necessarily untrue, but what I would say is for a more specific type of situation is 
there is a possibility that they'll ignore it, but that's just because they may not catch it right away. And at any point, any composer, any person that has any sort of involvement in that song can copyright claim you. So it's literally a just, un, it's just dumb. Like you're just doing it with the, oh, well, I'm gonna take this risk. There's just no point. As for it being removed, um, I'm pretty sure you need to do something rather egregious to have that happen to a video. I mean, I guess there are probably some companies out there that are just like, No, you're gonna remove it right now. We're taking it off YouTube. But I mean, I haven't, I've never really seen any cover song have that issue. That's usually like when you're uploading like news stories or exclusives from like news websites. Sometimes they'll try to get you copyright striked and take your video down because we want the chant, we want the views, we want the attention, not you, you can't cover our stuff. But I guess it's possible for that to be in music too. I just haven't seen it yet. Artist or the copyright holder receives the money generated from that content that you would receive. Effectively, what happens is you make the content, but it features someone else's song. Therefore, they make a claim and that takes away some or all of the money that you would have generated and it goes straight to the copyright holder. Now, blocked is where the artist or... demonetized after uploading someone else's content. Effectively what that means is you'll be demonetized and they'll take the money from your content that you made because it's theirs. Everyone with us so far? Label can say, not only do we not care about the money, even if there is some, but we don't want that on YouTube at all. And so therefore it can have that video removed. So therefore you will get a notification saying, really sorry, but you don't own the material in this video. Therefore it has been blocked. You can then appeal, but also you can get a copyright strike. So what happens if you're not making any money from that? Fair enough, but again, I mean, it's just a continuum of the same thing. You're just like spinning, spinning in a carousel. I don't understand why. You... I thought I was, you know, I have a problem with repetition as well. When I talk to someone, I explain it in multiple different ways if I don't feel like they understand it. But I mean, some of the rhetoric you're utilizing here is so self-explanatory. If it gets removed off YouTube, that's the, the end. It gets removed off YouTube. Whether or not they send you a message or otherwise, it's that's just kind of like par for the course. You think it's just gonna get removed off YouTube and you're just gonna be like, hey, uh, where am I going? Where'd it go? No one told me anything about what's going on. Cover. Let's say you're a YouTuber who says, I don't have enough subs to monetize my channel. I just want to make a really great cover to give it to my audience. Does that make a difference? Sadly, it doesn't make any difference whatsoever because technically you don't own the material that you used in that piece of content. So the rights holder has every right to stop you doing that, even if you aren't making any money at all. You don't have to make financial gain for that to become something illegal. All you have to do is use somebody else's property. So then it comes down to, will you get caught? And how do you... <sighs> okay, you wanted to just make a video, which again, I don't know how you think that that makes sense to say. like. Even if I don't care about making money, I just want to give it to my audience and that's it. Like it's, it doesn't, like you said, it doesn't matter. But I mean, again, this is a non sequitur in terms of information because you don't care about the money. You just care about appeasing the audience. Therefore you just want to do that. You know, that based on everything you've said up until this point that that can't happen because it's not legal. So, I mean, are you just saying this to give more examples of something that's already understood? I just, I don't, I don't get you at all, man. I don't. You get caught, which there are several ways. For example, YouTube, as well as every other social media platform, has some automated inbuilt software, a little bit like Shazam, that can match up tracks and say, hang on, these are very similar. Inbuilt? Do you mean built in? I think you're confusing yourself, my friend. Also, 
how you get caught or if you get caught, it's a matter of when. So again, it's just a roll of the dice. If you want to play that game, if you're just trying to get, you know, local, small fragments of attention on the internet here and there to promote yourself, by all means, I guess. But if you're actually trying to, you know, build yourself online, it's not about taking chances like that. You don't want to take chances like that because it will jeopardize your ability to, you know, succeed on here. <laughs> But let's say you change the tempo, you change the key, maybe you change the melody, you can completely change a lot of the track and then you make it your own. Something like say postmodern jukebox. Does that make a difference? No, absolutely not because therefore it is still the property of somebody else. You're right, it doesn't make a difference. So that's why it's baffling to me why you referenced them in the beginning as if what they were doing was any more acceptable just because it wasn't necessarily caught up digitally in terms of the copyright laws and such. So now, however, there is quite a, a small little caveat that you left out there. There are people that do get away and they have millions of views on these videos where they put in the disclaimer, well, I don't know the rights to this music or this is um, not monetized by me, all credit goes to the whoever. And that, again, doesn't matter. It's putting that in there, Still, you're still violating copyright law by not obtaining the licenses. However, when you record a song like, and you change the tune or you change the, uh, like the speed of the song or any of those sorts of things, it can trick the algorithm. And you can get under that. You can basically bypass that filter um, where it you know, says this is the song and this is what you're doing and you don't have any of the permissions to use it, bam. But that's why I've heard people who do like, for instance, uh, Neon Trees, um, Everybody Talks. I've heard cover songs where, you know, he normally goes, everybody talks, everybody talks big. And then they do it. Everybody talks, everybody talks big. And it's like, what the? He just is singing in that high of a pitch. I think another one of these music styles that try to get under the algorithm in terms of it's pointing out copyright uh, is Nightcore stuff. And it's just like, how did this become popular? And even some of that, uh, I've seen some of that get taken down too. So, well, we'll see, huh? Maybe that changing pitch and changing speed isn't gonna work no more. <laughs> so whether you're doing a drum cover and you're playing along to a track or whether you're doing a karaoke track and singing along to it, Technically, you don't own the rights and it can be claimed, whether that is automatically or whether that is someone from a company seeing it and putting in a physical copyright claim on your track. So now we are getting into... You mean copyright claim on the video? What do you mean on the track? Anyways, pointing out, playing it along with a video and then doing a karaoke rendition those are still one and the same. It's just different instruments. One is a drum and the other one is vocal cords. <sighs> Using a lot of the same examples, man. Again, just explaining it in different ways, but ultimately leading down the same path, so I... Into publishing rights instead of recording rights. Rather than saying, I'm just using that track and I'm taking that version of it and playing it, I'm completely recreating it. This is now publishing. Now, the difference with this means even if you change everything, you might change the melody, you might change the production, but it's still the same song. It still means you are in breach because you are using elements of that song. So what comes under these publishing rights? Well, for example, if you use the lyrics, that's a no-no. If you write down the lyrics and put them on the screen, that's a no-no. If you hum the melody, that's a big no-no. So effectively, you can't use someone else's track under any circumstances on YouTube apart from under fair use. The big labels live. So if you are completely redesigning the song, how exactly are you supposed to hum the melody? Are you saying to hum the melody of the old song with the new one? If you completely change the composition and instrumentation of a song and just keep the lyrics, 
I, I'm assuming I've heard of that. I probably have and just don't remember it. But if you're gonna go through the effort of recompose or recomposition and doing all the stuff that makes it not the original song anymore, or lesser the lyrics, you might as well just write your own song. <laughs> I, I mean, that would be quite astonishing. I mean, I would like to see an artist do that. And then I would point that out to them, <laughs> that if you're going to do all that, just come up with your own lyrics at that point. I mean, you've basically made your own song. <laughs> Truly hire teams of people to go through YouTube and other social media platforms to find copyright strikes because they know there is a lot of money. Can you imagine out of all of the facts? I think that there is some truth to that maybe for some specific songs that stand out or that have some sort of uniqueness to them. They may hire a team of people specifically for that, but they're not hiring a team to go out and look for copyright strikes. They're going out to look for videos to copyright strike. That's how they, you know, like you said, they know there's a lot of money in them, but they don't go and look for a video that already has a copyright strike. Thousands of uploads on YouTube every single day. Can you imagine how many Beatles covers there are? Can you imagine how many Rolling Stones covers there are? Can you imagine how many ACDC covers there are? So therefore, there are teams of people searching them out, giving them copyright strikes. Taylor Swift cover, no. Um, when you say thousands of videos online, I mean, that's a huge understatement, my friend. As of February 2020, as far as we know, per minute, 500 hours per minute. So yeah, that is a boatload of content. So there may be teams specifically hired for like extremely exclusive pieces of art or music or whatever, but odds are they're hiring a team of people that are programmers who make bots and who probably use like some kind of other algorithm within the YouTube algorithm, or maybe they corroborate with YouTube to formulate these extra uh, additional algorithms that they can just throw in there to point out these specific songs. But they're not these team. There's not huge corporations hiring these massive teams of people to exhaust all hours of time and company money to sit online and go through, go through, go through 500 hours of content. It, it's, that's not the case, my friend. It's not manual. Like the way that you're describing it, it's not, I, I almost highly, highly doubt that that's how it's being done because it would cost the business an exorbitant amount of money for them to function that way. It's much more beneficial just to create bots and to create algorithms that maybe YouTube actually works with these major record labels on and find things that way, because that's far more you know, productive. And like you said, you can get away with it sometimes. That's why those people, there's like a million views on some other videos, and maybe to some degree they don't care anymore, perhaps. But if you are a somebody or a person trying to be a somebody, not just some random throwaway account with like 500 subs, but a 600 or 6 million views on a song that's not theirs, they're probably not gonna care, like you said, but those are the circumstances that they probably wouldn't care. If you're trying to be a YouTuber and you do that, <clears throat> they're gonna care. <laughs> Taylor Swift cover, no. Taylor Swift cover, no. And it's huge business, so labels know that and therefore they hire teams of people to go searching. So what happens if you want to get a license? Let's say you are doing a cover, not just for YouTube, but you would like to take this across all streaming platforms, so you figure you should probably get a license. Well, in which case, let's talk about music licensing. Am I cool or am I cool? The first license we need to talk about is... <clears throat> are you cool or are you cool? Well, 
I have to say that you are an individual who repeats themselves ad nauseum, an individual who points out things that should be extremely obvious otherwise, and then just, like I said, you continue to re-roll the same thread of logic. And we're about almost eight minutes into this video, and now you've finally begun to elaborate somewhat on how to do these cover songs. And I actually was like, at this point, I, I watched the video at like two times speed because I was like, what's going on here? This dude just keeps talking in circles and he's not really elaborating on how to do this. And so I looked at the comments and some person said, the real video starts at 1211. And I thought that was interesting and I actually referenced it. And once we get to there, I'll bring up again that he is correct about the mechanical license and that I didn't know that you could still upload stuff to other platforms that weren't like a video server. But if you think cool, man, hey, more power to you, right? We all gotta feel good about ourselves in some ways. It's a mechanical license. The mechanical license is for the audio and this allows the property to be used. So therefore, that means it's stuff like CDs, vinyls, iTunes, ringtones, and also streaming services. But this is where you have the choice of what you choose to listen to. I choose to go and get that CD. I choose to listen to stuff on streaming. Now this is different to radio because that's performance rights. You don't actually choose what you listen to on the radio, even if you choose which radio station you listen to. So, the mechanical license. This is just me nitpicking at this point, but if you call and put in a request, you're technically choosing what you listen to on the radio. It's basically covering everything audio that you get to choose that you listen to. Then there's a sync license. Now a sync license is very similar to a mechanical license, but this is where you are syncing the video and the audio. So effectively, if you make a YouTube video where you've got the audio and the video, the sync license comes into play. So once you've made your YouTube video and put So let's get this straight. If you have a sync license, it means that you're uploading audio and video. That's it. But no, you want to you want to over accentuate your point by saying, therefore, if you upload it to YouTube, therefore, it's this. It's. It's already self-apparent that it's that. You just said that a previous statement. It out and it has had a claim. What happens next? Well, technically you were in breach. So the artist or label can take any money that is away from your video for themselves or they can have it removed like we talked about. However, YouTube is full of cover songs. So how have most of those people got away with it? Well, this, is where it gets to be. How have they gotten away with it? <laughs> You've already explained that multiple times. And if they didn't get away with it, how did they do it? <laughs> Licensing. A gray area kind of like my beard. The issue is, over the last 10 years of YouTube, the gray is fading. And the reason for that is because the industry is catching up faster and faster. Not only is technology catching up, but they're hiring people to come and find and take what is rightfully theirs. So let's talk about the elephant in the room, fair use. Fair use is where someone can take someone else's content and they can use it under certain conditions. But the problem with this is fair use only comes into play once you have already had a claim against you. It's very similar to copyright. Mm. 
fair use only comes into play when you have a strike made against you. No. Fair use comes into play whenever you are doing something under fair use. It only comes into play in another way, ooh, rhyming, when you get a copyright strike or claim. It's when you have to reference it to fight against it. But fair use, as long as it's being utilized as it's stated in the law, is always in play. I don't know if you know this, but as soon as you have written something, it has copyright. But that's not the issue. Having copyright and proving copyright are two very different things. So when someone puts a claim against you, you have to prove that you haven't done anything wrong. And that is where fair use comes into play. And the issue with this is it's subjective. So it could go to court and one judge might find it fair use whilst another judge might find it not fair use. So if you know the YouTuber, and that is a moot point because whether or not one judge thinks if it's fair use and another one thinks it's not fair use, all that matters is the law. Is it under fair use by the law? Are they following the law in accordance to fair use? The law is not subjective. The only thing that I will say in respect to that is something that you yourself elaborate on in this video. I don't know if you realize it, it doesn't seem like you do, but the only time that this subjectivity matters is if people that are in power choose to trample on fair use. And I was around when I saw the, like the nostalgia critic thing, the uh, where's the fair use, um, and that got the attention of like the CEO or something of YouTube, I think, and then things got like resolved to some modicum of a degree um, because these big companies, they knew full well that this, the nostalgia critic was doing stuff under fair use and he's been doing it for a while, but they just didn't care. They're rich. They don't want it on there, even if he did it the right way. So they went after him. So it's not about subjectivity. That's equivalent to saying the arguments that you've been making for copyright and then me coming in and saying, well, I covered it and I did it in this and this and this way. So it's subjective. There's no subjectivity. It's in law. Fair use is a law. Copyright is a law. Rick Beato, one of my favorite YouTubers, and he goes through this all of the time because he is an educator. And as he puts it, how are you supposed to educate without examples of historic music to bring it to life? But if Rick is demonstrating... Well, yeah, of course, because you can only talk so much in terms of explaining composition, sound, I mean, I'm not sure. I, again, I feel like you're talking to people and you like talking to them as if they're like developmentally challenged or something. It's fairly obvious why someone would need to demonstrate what they're discussing. A scale or a certain feel, and then he brings an example from a track in that is education, and that is 100% fair use. The pro So when he does something under fair use, that is 100% fair use. Do you not see how that contradicted what you just said previously about subjectivity? Something cannot be 100% one thing if it's subjective what that thing is. <laughs> The problem with this is YouTube can't tell the difference between fair use and not fair use. 
It's not about YouTube not comprehending the differences. It's about the algorithm being imperfect and or the aforementioned companies just trampling all over the fair use policy. So YouTube will just be binary code saying, you can't do that, therefore you get a claim or you get a exactly. copyright strike. And right. even if it's a person who's made that copyright knowing it's fair use, it still means that you, the content creator, needs to appeal. And the problem with that is, that's a scary process, to actually appeal against a huge artist or a huge label. So most people don't. Most people just let it go by the way and allow that money to drift off to that label or potentially to even let that track get blocked. So there's a few things that you... Exactly. So do you not see how now this contrasting statement that you made about how daunting it is of a task to go against a copyright, against a huge label or against a huge artist, and that people just let it go to the wayside. Do you not see how that falls in line with what your statement previously was about subjectivity with judges? It has little to do with that, and almost nothing to do with that if I'm honest, and everything to do with companies just trampling all over fair use. How you're not able to make that connection when you just made these two distinctive statements and putting it in there with any sort of nuance whatsoever, it just blows my mind, dude. I, whew, man, mm -mm. pretty intense, pretty intense. The stuff that you recorded and like didn't like draw these parallels or make any sort of connections. You need to know if you are going to make covers moving forward, especially on YouTube, because it's a very different game than it used to be three or four years ago. Number one is if you get a claim... It's not been a different game at all. It's just like what you said previously, that they had to play catch up. It's always been the same thing. You can appeal without any extra penalty, but if you get three claims within 90 days, then that could result in your entire channel being taken down. When it comes to how... Um, I'm pretty sure if those claims turn into copyright strikes and you get three of those in 90 days, it's taken down. Now, of course, I could be wrong. I'm an up and coming guy on YouTube. I don't know all of the intricacies behind it yet, um, but I'm pretty sure because when I got not strikes, they were just claims, Specifically, YouTube stated to me, this is not a strike, you are not in trouble, but this video is now going to be demonetized to you and monetized to the shareholders or the people that have the rights to the music. Um, I'm pretty sure it's not about the claims, it's about those copyright strikes. I mean, like I said, I could be wrong here, but this is what I'm going to leave in the video because I'm pretty sure you're not correct in that respect. How much you use of someone else's song, that doesn't matter, whether it's one second or one hour. All that matters is, can you claim fair use? Because if you can't, you have breached the copyright rules. And also, if you credit the artist that you've taken it from, that still doesn't matter. In fact, it kind of makes it worse because if you're actually crediting the artist, you're actually admitting guilt and saying, yes, I did do this, so that there's no way that you can stand up in court and say, I didn't know. If you're crediting the artist, you're not admitting guilt. I'm pretty sure the people that do that are just ignorant of copyright laws and they think that if you put in there, I don't own the rights to this music, or all credit goes to this artist, that that's just a means of protecting themselves so that they don't get in trouble for uploading that. I'd have to say that has more along the lines to do with ignorance because this stuff, it is complicated. Like I said at the beginning of this video, I've been trying to figure it out and basically my comprehension is you're gonna have to just put it online in track form after you get a mechanical license, and that's all you're going to be able to do. If you want to upload it on here, like I said, I'm, uh, he's getting close to the point where I'm going to cut away and show the this uh, attorney lady. They both mentioned this gray area. Now, he states that it's been shrinking. She didn't bring that up at all. She'll show you what she said in just a few more moments. 
So it doesn't matter how much you credit, you still can't use other people's material. So the million dollar question is, how do you get hold of these licenses? Well, there are plenty of companies who are there to help you. Like for example, the Harry Fox Agency, or Louder, L-O-U-D-R, or also Easy Song Licensing. Or on top of that, there are other websites like We Are The Hits, but on top of those, you can also get in contact with publishers and do this yourself. And yes, it takes a little bit more of legwork. But so now we get to the point in your video where this should have been like one of the very first things that you talked about. And you just spent this entire video just spinning around on a carousel saying the same thing over and over again, using examples that are pretty much mirror-like images of each other. And when your video literally says how to legally cover songs on YouTube without copyright claims. Instead, what this should have said is things that will happen if you don't cover songs with licenses. And then at the end, putting and how to obtain those licenses. <laughs> because you're literally like talking about how to do it. And instead, all you're talking about is what's gonna happen if you don't do it. There's no reason why you can't contact publishers yourself. I think whilst a lot of that is the technical information, I would say one thing that is for sure is YouTube is now being clamped down on. We have had 10. So here's the point where I'm gonna cut away to her video. Covering it to a visual, we're supposed to still get into contact with the actual rights holders. And we're supposed to actually get a license to be able to put the song to a visual. So this is where things get a little muddy, right? Because you say, well, I'm going to do a Lady Gaga cover. And you're like, okay, well, I need to get in touch with Lady Gaga. That's going to be a little tricky. So yeah, she makes a good point. I mean, you're saying it like it's just a walk in the park. Like, oh yeah, this million dollar celebrity, I'm just going to reach out to them and just get this, you know, permission to do the sync license. Years of the Wild West. And it's not that it's not fair, but what's actually happened is the industry hadn't caught up. Now it has a way of catching up and YouTube is big, big business. And the labels and the publishing companies know this, which is why they are out for blood. So if you are gonna do a cover, then make sure that you have done your due diligence. Of course it's big business, it's owned by Google now. And yes, you're right about it catching up. And But in terms of the fairness, I mean, fair use has been trampled on, so that's debatable. <laughs> Just make sure you know that it isn't gonna have that copyright strike. Make sure that you can use this cover and make sure you can use it in a way that will bring value to your audience so that you're not having to go through all of that for the sake of nothing. Also remember that every single country in the world has slightly different rules on this. So depending on where you are in the world also depends on the rules of the game. So you need to check in the country that you are already in. So guys, Make thank you sure so much for watching. You Hopefully you won't get any correctly. copyright strikes because they're Basically, an absolute pain in the bum. That if you do entire that, sentence should have been condensed into. Whether or not it's beneficial to your audience is irrelevant because if you get your channel removed from the platform, there will be no audience anymore. <laughs> so that's the video for you guys. Let's just say it, it frustrated me enough. enough to make this. This is the first response video that I actually was like, I'm making this video now. <laughs> Good on you, man, for the visual effects. The videography looks pretty good, you know, and if you do know how to talk, you're not like uh, 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 like me sometimes, where I just stutter or say the wrong words. <laughs> but in respect to everything else, man, I mean, that you finally got to the point of this video at the end of the video, and you didn't bother to explain any of the nuances, you contradicted yourself, and it's just, I don't know, man. It's pretty impressive that this video almost has a quarter of a million views. And how many subs do you got? Like almost 200,000? I don't know. I mean, I'd be interested to see another one of your videos maybe, but this one is pretty bad, man. And what's with that weird effect that you keep doing? Like, it just seems like such a amateur technique to do. Especially if it's only for a few seconds. It's almost like, oh, never mind, I changed my mind. Oh, never mind, I changed my mind. Like. 
I don't know. I mean, I do random stuff like that, but that's because I'm a noob and still figuring this stuff out. I don't know, man. Seems kind of weird. Good on you, though. I mean, A for effort. A for effort. F minus for everything else, though.